Hello, scholars. Welcome. Ka-chunk, ka-boom. It's an earthquake. They don't actually explode, but we measure them in terms of how much energy is released. An earthquake is a sudden burst of energy in Earth's crust. And they are distributed across our globe through space, geog geographically, and time in how often they occur. Let's talk about these things. So we're going to connect earthquakes to plate tectonics and specifically to plate tectonic boundaries. So real quick review. The surface of the Earth is covered by large, rigid tectonic plates. And they move around relative to one another and where they meet are tectonic boundaries. This is the theory of plate tectonics. Now, earthquakes occur at tectonic boundaries. Divergent boundaries, whether it's a continental rift or a mid-ocean ridge, are going to have moderate earthquakes that are shallow in Earth's crust. As new crust is being created and the movement of uh, oceanic crust is occurring, shallow earthquakes are happening because an earthquake happens when there is displacement along a fault, releasing the stored energy in brittle deformation. Convergent boundaries. So subduction zones and collision zones. These are the biggest earthquakes that we've got. Collision zones would be the Himalayas. When the Himalayas are growing, they have big earthquakes. Examples, the Nepal earthquake that's happened recently. Um, subduction zone, the uh, Sumatra earthquake of 2004, terrible, killed hundreds of thousands of people because the mega thrust fault happened out at sea and then it sent a tsunami that moved so quickly and then hit the coast of Sumatra, killing hundreds of thousands of people. It's an absolute tragedy. What we see also are transform boundaries. So our three types of plate tectonic boundaries are where Earth's tectonic plates are moving. And when they move, they release energy. That energy creates an earthquake that can really, really affect the people who are living nearby. So transform boundaries like our beloved San Andreas Fault. This is the big one that affects Los Angeles and San Francisco, the two big metropolitan areas of California. When there's big movements around the LA Basin on the San Andreas Fault, these populations are affected. Same thing up there in the San Francisco Bay Area. So you might be asking, are earthquakes limited to plate tectonic boundaries? And that's a great question. And the answer to that is no. Earthquakes can also happen away from plate tectonic boundaries, they're called intraplate, like the New Madrid seismic zone that covers through Tennessee into Missouri and then also winds Arkansas up into Illinois. Now why would earthquakes be happening here? Well, let's think about through time. The Appalachians at one point were a new mountain range that was growing that then are now on the decline. Excuse me one second. <coughs> so there is one more second. <coughs> Pardon me. So there is ancient te tectonics that are occurring. All of these old faults that were there from the time of the orogeny, the mountain building event, are still there. And they still have movement. It's not as big and it's not as frequent, but it still occurs. So Anywhere there is a fault on Earth, which is all over the Earth, there can be an earthquake. It's just faults are generally located, active faults are located near regions of active tectonics, but not exclusively. So earthquakes can happen anywhere in the world. How do we know when earthquakes occur? Well, we can't predict the future for earthquakes, unfortunately. We could save a lot of lives if we could. But what we can do is look at how many earthquakes have happened by digging earthquake trenches and mapping out the movement along faults and saying, here's a fault. Over the last thousand years, this fault has moved five times. So the recurrence interval 
is on the order of roughly every 200 years. Now, <clears throat> that information can allow planners to predict when an earthquake might occur, but with no accuracy at this point do we have the technology to say, the big earthquake is going to occur on this date, everybody prepare, lock your doors, get out of your house, let's be safe. That is not uh, within our capabilities of seismology just yet. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> tectonic plate boundaries with global earthquakes. You can see the boundaries are where the concentrations of earthquakes are. Every year there's thousands of earthquakes. Most of them are too small to be perceived by humans, but our seismographs can record them because uh, they are very sensitive to earth vibrations. Not exclusively though, you still see earthquakes away from plate tectonic boundaries, but for the most part, Earthquakes overlap with plate tectonic boundaries, and they are frequent enough that they are happening all of the time, all over the world. So our earthquakes, earthquakes are globally distributed, mostly overlapping with plate tectonic boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform, the biggest being megathrust faults at convergent boundaries, also between boundaries, intraplate, and then occurring very frequently, more frequently than we would think, because maybe once a year, and then every few years to decades, we have an earthquake so big that it causes widespread damage, destruction, and fatalities that really clue the whole world into the power of earthquakes. But in the scope of plate tectonics, the surface of our Earth is constantly shifting and moving, and it happens through all these small-scale little movements, small-scale little earthquakes, punctuated by big events that happen much more infrequently. So this is a discussion on earthquake distribution. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.